Welcome to worship here at Elizabethtown Baptist Church. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Today, I want to reflect on what we talked about last Sunday. Now, I'm under the assumption, of course, that all of you remembered exactly what I talked about last Sunday, that you paid attention to the sermon, that most of you have it memorized, almost verbatim. But just in case you don't have it memorized or just in case you don't remember anything at all from last Sunday, let me remind you just a little bit of what we talked about. We talked about the responsibility of the church, and by the church I mean every Christian, to evangelize or reach the world for Jesus Christ. We also talked about the fact that this is a hurting world, that this is a crazy world. And it is that. As a matter of fact, things may have even gotten a little crazier, in your opinion, and I get that. As I talk to people, I hear people say things like, I've li uh, these are un uh, unprecedented times, or I've never seen anything like this before in my lifetime. Now, if I say, if I say that I've never seen anything like this before in my lifetime, then that's no big deal because I'm so young. But the people that I'm talking to are 80 and 90 years old, and when a 90-year-old person looks at you and says, Rudy, I've never seen anything like this before in my lifetime, I tend to pay attention. Yes, it's a crazy world. And on top of all that, we have COVID-19, and we have the church's mission in a COVID-19 world. That's a little bit about what we talked about last week. Since then, a couple of people have come to me and said, Rudy, I heard your sermon last week, but I've got a question for you. What are we supposed to do? Can you tell us specifically how can we evangelize in a COVID-19 world? That is a great question. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. There's a couple things that you can do, like I said. <clears throat> the first thing that you can do, and this is vitally important to your Christian witness, whether it's a COVID-19 world or not, the first thing you can do that's vitally important is that the content of your character, the way that you act, has to be consistent with your Christian profession of faith. Let me break that, uh, break that down. Let me put that another way. You can't be mean to the lady at the cash register and then tell them what a wonderful Christian you are. Or you can't let your children or your spouse or your family members or your friend see you being mean to the waitress or the waiter or someone else. And then try to witness to them about Jesus Christ and the love of Christ. It's difficult to do that. You can't be mean to your spouse. You can't, as you've heard me say before, engage in spousal abuse. You can't engage in a life that is clearly not from Jesus Christ and then try to tell the world what a wonderful Christian you are. It's difficult to do that. Your life, the way that you live your life, has to be consistent with your Christian profession of faith. And that's not just the way you live your life in front of other people uh, uh, physically. Yes, a lot of us are living our lives virtually now. And that means that the things that you post on Facebook, the things that you post on Twitter, the things that you post on Instagram or Parler or whatever it is that you're using, the things that you post, if you say that you're a Christian, has to be consistent with the character of Jesus Christ. It has to be consistent with loving God and loving your neighbor. What you post matters. And if that's the way that you live and it's not Christian, online, in Instagram, in Twitter, virtually in social media, if those posts aren't Christian, you're going to have a hard time witnessing. Mahatma Gandhi once said, I like your Christ, but I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. I think there's some truth to that. I think so many Christians are so unlike the Christ that they proclaim. 
Maybe you're not a fan of Gandhi. Maybe you're more a fan of Oliver, uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr., by the way, was a uh, Supreme Court justice for 30 years. He has the unofficial title of the greatest Supreme Court justice since John Marshall. And this is what Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, says. At one point of his life, he explained his choice of career by saying this, I might have entered the ministry if certain clergymen I knew had not looked and acted so much like undertakers. Whether you like Gandhi or whether you like Oliver Wendell Holmes, either, well, either one, the statement or the meaning is still the same. The way that we act matters. And when we say that we are Christians filled with love, filled with hope, filled with joy, filled with peace, you remember those things from the Advent candles. When we say that we are Christians filled with the Spirit of Christ, the way that we act matters. That's the first thing. The second thing is not just that you act well and that you stop doing negative things. But the, uh, the other thing that we can do, and this may be a little bit more of a challenge, is that we do something positive. Here's the thing, I know that you can't go into your community and witness. I know that you can't go door to door, knocking door to door, uh, 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 and, and uh, invite people to church. I get that. But what you can do is use social media. As a matter of fact, there are quite a few articles out there about how to use social media to do something that's crazy. How to use social media to post a part of your testimony. How to use social media to tell the world about something God has done in your life. It could start off that way. It could start off with, hey folks, just want to take today to tell you about a big blessing I got today. It's just going to be a quick 30 second post. You can even say, hey folks, I was listening to this crazy pastor named Rudy and he told me to do this. Fine, blame it on me. I'm okay with that. You say, well, Pastor Rudy, I'm, I'm going to look silly. I'm going to look silly if I post that online. Have you seen the things that are posted online? Believe you me, there is no way if you've seen anything on TikTok that you think that you're going to look silly. The things online are insane. I mean, come on, a million views for cat videos? Yes, I know that cat videos are cute and they're supposed to help, you know, you relax and all those things. But really, a million views, not only cat videos. I mean, there's some things that I've seen online that are just pure dumb or just pure dangerous. More often than not, both. The world can use something positive online. The world can use somebody telling them about what God has done in their life. The world can use the Christian community telling people about the love and the hope and the peace and the joy that Jesus Christ brings. That's being a witness. That's how you can evangelize. You say, well, Pastor Rudy, that, that's got to be hard. No, it's, it's actually not that hard. I saw a lady who had to be in her 70s use a smartphone and post a video on how to make chicken and dumplings. This video got over 142,000 hits. And she's in her 70s, did it by herself. If she can do it, I think you can do it too. And here's the other thing. On video, you can do it again. I'll tell you a little secret. We've had a couple of takes for the sermon already. Technical difficulties, but it happens. You can do it. And if you didn't like it the first time, I'm just being practical with you folks. If you didn't like it the first time, do it again. But get the positive message out there. Get the message of God's blessing in your life. Get the message about what God is doing in your life. Get the message about how God has helped you through a painful time. Get that message out there so that people can have something positive. Those are just two ways that you can evangelize. Two things that you have to do. Make sure that when you say you're a Christian, that the way you post and the way that you live connects to that profession of faith. 
and then get something positive out there. I promise you, it'll start to bear fruit. You say, well, Pastor Rudy, I might not get 142,000 hits. You don't need 142,000 hits. You just need five, and then you need one of those people to be edified. That means built up. You need one of those people to be encouraged by something you said. That's all you need. And that's doing kingdom work. That's doing the work of God in today's world. Friend, we're all responsible. We're all responsible for reaching this world for Jesus Christ. The Great Commission has always been to every Christian. As I said last week, it's not just about the professional pastor. The Great Commission is for everyone who professes Jesus Christ and has received the power of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. In this place, in your home, in the city around you, in the nation around you, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Hey folks, once again, I have a challenge to the Christians out there. And again, let me briefly define Christian. Christians are people who love God with all their heart, mind, soul, strength. And Christians are people who love their neighbors as they love themselves. So the challenge for every Christian out there is that you reach out to other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with the good news that he loves them. That no matter who they are, or where they're from, or what they've done, that Jesus Christ loves them. If you would do that, you're doing kingdom work. And if you need some help with that, feel free to reach out to me at Elizabethtown Baptist Church. I'd love to talk to you. My email address is really easy. It's pastorrudy at elizabethtownbaptist.org. Reach out to me. Let's chat. Let's talk about how we can be more effective witnesses in this world. Hope to see you soon.